All right, so if you purchase a Blackhound Evolve Series Optic, it's going to come in this definitely over-the-top box. I appreciate that. Very nice. Should have no issues with shipping, no matter who is shipping your optic. Their promise, their loyalty to the warranty is a pretty good warranty. Lifetime warranty should have no issues there whatsoever. But if you do, go ahead and check that out. Moving down, there's a checklist here. This is the inspection checklist, and I really appreciate this because there's lots of information in there that you're going to want to know when you're first mounting it up, like ring torque specs. A lot of people don't know, but the image quality can be diminished and the function of the optic can be impeded if you do not have the proper inch pounds for your rings and uh, the things that you know attach it to the gun that can mess with it if it's a little too loose, a little too tight perhaps you'll have some issues. And so just consider these specs right here. They know what they're talking about. So to the Picatinny rail with the rings that this comes with down in here, make sure you're not exceeding 55 inch pounds, staying within that range. The top screws for the rings that it comes with, again, 18 to 20 inch pounds. That's really important both for the optic, the image, as well as the hardware, not stripping anything out. I think that was a good inclusion for this little chart they have here. All right, so you can see here there's a whole list of things that the inspector is going to make sure that they have included in this package, and that's going to save you time. It's going to save them time. Another thing that's nice about this is they're not just mass producing it and hoping that it turns out okay. They're actually going through a checklist and making sure, does this optic function well? Does it look right? Does it meet our expectations before we send it to a customer? So quality control, I would say, is actually pretty high, and I think they're doing a really good job by um, maybe separating themselves from the pack by having something like this and even listed inside the optic so we know someone else has gone through this list and this optic should be good to go um, that also helps you determine you know the the quality that you'd expect internally what kind of standards do these companies have with the manufacturers they're working with and so this gives me a good feeling it's a good vibe all the way all right moving on right over here sunshade i have not attached the sunshade just yet but it comes with the sunshade if you need that for lots of glare shooting in bright conditions scope comes in a bag with a dry uh, one of those dry sacks and then you're going to get two of these these are bubble levels and they're magnetic on the bottom i actually use these to help um, set up my scope and so those two you can you can level your rifle level the table uh, level the rail that you have or the optic turret cap however you're going to do it everybody's got their own way to do it but it comes with two of them which is definitely helpful i really appreciated that i pretty much didn't have anything that i needed i just opened up the scope and it was ready to go which is their uh, intention that is their goal is that you would be able to just get to shooting quickly there is inside a very important manual do not skip out on that manual uh, there's also one online, but don't skip out on the manual. There's some important information there, especially if you're new to shooting or new to these types of optics. I think that's useful. Inside, there are things like this. This little red guy here is to help you get your um, battery compartment going for the illumination. And so if you weren't sure what that was, that's what that is related to. There's a lens cloth in there, and then there's an Allen. And so the Allen right there, well, actually, there's an Allen in the back. Okay, and that's for the let's think about this this is for the turret and i'm going to need that in just a second and then right here this is for the scope rings and so that's torx i believe yep that's torx or star bit i appreciate that quite a bit that's my preferred method for setting up scope rings just find that they don't strip out and they're pretty reliable moving on down something really cool that i don't think i've seen in many companies boxes is this is a scope brush and so a uh, scope brush if you've never used one before let me just go ahead and uh, open this up for you all right i'm doing this one-handed but as you can see here there's a cap and on the top of that there's a little bit of a squeegee kind of deal there and a piece of foam and so that's important right there to not scratch things or to collect a little bit of dust and on top of that the other side this is very important for not scratching lenses you do have a brush right there it's a very fine brush i'm not going to get my oily uh, fingers on it because i want to keep it dry and clean and guys I, I don't know if you've run more expensive glass or higher quality glass you don't want to always just use a lens cleaning cloth sometimes this is necessary i've gotten done with matches before i've had my bipod forks up high forgot to close my flip caps or i got some sand in there and i don't want to just rub the scope with a cloth Sometimes it's really, really important to dump out the sand or whatever grit has gotten there and then use a brush or something like this to pick it up, uh, mostly the brush first and then the other tools later. So that's a really useful, handy thing. I'm going to go ahead and throw that in my main gun bag because I think that's a, a sweet addition to it.
All right, so when you know that you're good and zeroed, all you have to do, and this one is really simple, guys. It's actually one of the more simple zeros I've ever set. And it surprised me. I, I looked underneath and I kept looking for more parts or more pieces or more tools that I would have to use, but there's just none because all you have to do after you've set your zero is go ahead and move it over to the line and tighten it down. And in fact, your zero stop, if I can go ahead and pop this cap off there, it's kind of unique. It's a little different. Let me zoom in on it. All right, so you can see inside of there, it looks sort of similar to a lot of scope caps, but this one has this little V notch on a pin that rotates back and forth just a little bit. And what this does is actually pretty cool. It has a function. There's a reason this is purpose built with that design and how that engages on the zero stop itself, the pin that is on the erector tube assembly or on top of that. Let me just show you the top of the turret tower here. Okay, so looking inside there, it's really simple. In fact, it's probably more simple than you're used to with a lot of scopes, but there is a pin right there. And what that's gonna do is engage that inner piece there. And I think you could probably get the idea if you're a little bit mechanical. Once I go ahead and drop it on that zero, I will tighten it down Kind of give it a little bit of a firm push down while I go ahead and tighten up those Allens. Just a reminder, when you tighten up the Allens, it's just enough to engage. It is stainless steel inside, stainless or brass. Either way, you just don't need to crank on these things. It's just enough to engage and pull the turret and, and make sure that it rotates along with the dial, the exposed housing that you're grabbing onto. You don't need to tighten these things down with like a huge amount of force, just enough snug enough that it will now actually rotate and let me get my hand out of the way i want to show you something i think it's kind of cool okay so check this out the zero is set but i can actually go down two tenths from my zero the way it's set up right now and the reason i like that is you know basically this is on a rim fire right now and rim fire is extremely temperature sensitive i have a horrible time of that in the summertime or the winter time and being able to actually change my zero by two tenths and travel down just a little bit is really nice especially if i wanted to have a 25 yard zero for nrl 22 um, i could do some creative things here between having it go two tenths low or back up or if i'm changing loads if i'm not going to shoot the same load and one is slightly different two tenths down that's really cool and so i appreciate that a whole lot these turrets by the way i'm going to go ahead and crank on them Yeah, really solid turrets. All right, so I didn't have a lot of time to set this shot up. I would do better camera work, but I have a striped gopher right where I need them. <laughs> that couldn't have been any better. I have a wood pile right behind them, right in a safe spot where I could take a shot. And uh, he's down. One shot, one kill, data was exactly on. Not too far away. That's that's probably 40 yards, but pretty cool. Man, that worked out really well. Already serving a purpose for me. All right, guys. So again, this is not a review. It's not an attempt at a review. I'm just showing you what I'm up to. I'm really enjoying my time with it so far. I'm under 200 rounds, so I just don't have that much to say. But I'm going to go ahead and mount this up on a few different rifles. So far in the 200 rounds, that's not very much with a rimfire. The 200 rounds, I'm really liking the glass. I'm really liking the smoothness of the magnification ring with that cattail on there, design, knurling. Uh, the reticle is definitely something I clicked with really well. I shot some really tight groups. In fact, let me grab one for you. So my first group at 100 yards, the sun is going down. I don't have a lot of time, but right there, that's a half inch. It's actually a little under a half inch group not too bad the reticle design and the size of the dot is always something i'm really critical of as well as tracking i'm going to talk a lot more about the features of the optic while you know like how i found it to work if it did what it's supposed to do if it lives up to the claims of the manufacturer i'm going to talk about all that during the actual review but so far i'm very pleased with the features that i've used and i i mean i already got to get get a kill in the first 30 seconds the thing was zeroed you know that was cool i'm um, running the rings on there right now and so those rings are like either a medium or a high i have to look into it and i'm running it on a 50 moa 419 rail and so i still have quite a bit of travel in here i may throw it into some rings that have kind of an infinity you know amount of 
uh, travel in them. You can set them up how you want to. Right now, I do have enough to get out to 500 yards. Um, I'd like to push that just a little bit with those specialized rings. So I might do that with this rig, or I'll just skip to center fire and start shooting some serious distance with it. Light at sundown tonight was really good. I can say right off the bat, one of the things that caught my eye was the light collection or the, the ability with a 50 millimeter objective. I wasn't sure exactly what to think. I'm just telling you right off the bat, there's a few things I noticed very quickly and I was like really happy with it. And so the image quality is one of the things, at least for tonight, not running at, at extreme ranges, not tracking it all the way out for the full 32 mils. I didn't do that, but just using it within, you know, a few mils there, the angleture of the glass didn't distort anything too much. The edges around the side, I was really looking at that during the heat of the day. And then this evening, looking at trueness of color and just, yeah, again, the light collection. I, I, I'm gonna run into a review if I don't shut up pretty quick here. I'm excited about this. I'm gonna run this NRL 22 with my wife. We're both gonna shoot this rifle. This is actually, that's, that's why it's set up a little bit to the rear, more than it would normally, is just so that this rifle can fit both of us for NRL 22. Pretty stoked about this little thing, man. I'm, I'm really happily surprised with the experience so far, but again, only 200 rounds. And so if you're interested, if I piqued your interest, go ahead and check out their website. That's Blackhound. And I'm sure they'll have some 4th of July inventory ready to go. I think these are probably, these particular ones, 318s, are probably in stock right now and already possibly shipping even. They have more models on the way, more inventory on the way. And so if you just can't wait for the review, uh, maybe just go ahead and buy it, see what they have. They have a lot more options and magnification ranges. They have different levels of uh, glass and you know quality control, production, things of that nature. You could go ahead and check out online on their website to see what else they have for offerings. But if they're anything like this one, um, I'm definitely interested and I'm curious to see what we're going to get out of this when I start running center fire at you know a thousand yards beyond. Thanks guys. Have a happy fourth.